is one impelled to sinful acts, even unwittingly, if as if engaged by force. Mm -hmm. The same question I was asking, which you were telling me, that uh, he's asking, oh Krishna, sorry, uh, yeah, oh Krishna, the descendant of Vishnu means Krishna, Krishna is coming in Vishnu, right? right? So, he's asking, oh Krishna, what is that force which is compelling or impelling uh, one, a person, to do sinful activity? Even if the person doesn't want, still he engages in sinful activity, still he does. He knows that, oh, I'm doing wrong. He doesn't want to also, but still he is engaged. He's, it's like Arjuna is asking, like, there's some force which is acting and driving the person, pushing the person for committing sinful activity. So what is that force? Because Arjuna is able to experience it, or he's a pure devotee of the Lord, but he's asking on our behalf. So we all know, we, we, are, we are able to experience a force, like um, there's some force which is just pushing us and just do this. We know that no, it is wrong, but still we are we are doing it. Some simple activity. So what is that force? Arjuna is asking. So Krishna is answering the next verse, verse number thirty-seven. Okay. So we'll chant together, maybe. Shri Bhagavan Vacha. Together we'll chant. Shri Bhagavan Vacha. Kama Esha Krodha Esha. Rajoguna Samudhavaha. Mahashano Mahapapma Vidya Vidyainam Iha Vairinam. So it goes like this. Maybe you can read the package. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, It is lust only, Arjun, which is born in born of contact with the material mode of passion and later transformed into force, and which is all devouring sinful enemy of this world. Hmm. So now Arjun asks this question that what is that force which is just pushing a person to do sinful activities even if the person doesn't want. So then Krishna is asked, uh, answering in the next verse itself. He is saying that in one word he is saying Kama Esha. Kam means lust. lust. So Krishna is saying in one word that is it's lust. Okay. Now what is that lust? How does it come upon? So lust, how does lust come? How does the lust come? How it originates. So Krishna is saying that it comes or it originates uh, from the mode of passion. The reason for lust is mode of passion. Okay. And that same lust it transforms into wrath. Right? Wrath. So wrath is nothing but anger. Right? So the same lust gets transformed into anger. So we will see some analysis from Bhagavad Gita second chapter also in the next slide. So, in brief, Krishna is saying that uh, what is that force? That force is lust. Maybe we can come there a little bit. Okay. <laughs> this way. So, that force is lust, which is pushing a person to do sinful activities, even if the person doesn't know. So, that is lust. And that same lust gets transformed into what? What? Wrath. Wrath. So, that is anger. Gets transformed into anger in the later stages. And how does the uh, Lust come upon it, it comes because of mode of passion. And that is the sinful, uh, sinful enemy of this world, all devouring sinful enemy, and is the greatest enemy of a person, of a living entity. Okay, so Krishna is saying that. Now, let's do some analysis quickly. So, now what is the meaning of lust? First of all, before going to the next slide, what is the meaning of lust? <coughs> What do you understand by lust? Anything which comes into your mind, we can discuss. So we know, right, uh, we have this experience in this world that we are um, <clears throat> completely, we are always, we are looking for sense gratification, right, at every moment of our life. And that's what, uh, that is the reason for, for, for which we came to this world. So, 
lust basically means um, to to enjoy something which doesn't belong to us that is simply lust something doesn't belong to me but i want to enjoy that thing so that is lust <laughs> so and uh, by the way uh, as a matter of reality if we talk about the reality nothing belongs to us in this world nothing belongs to us so because everything belongs to krishna krishna says right that uh, krishna says in the bhagavad gita only that everything belongs to me i am the proprietor of everything aham uh, sorry what is that uh, verse 5.29 uh, no no uh, yeah aham sarva se prabhu matra sarva pravartate but uh, uh, 5.29 5.29 how does it start ಸರ್ವಲೋಕಮಹೇಶ್ವರೋಕಮಹೇಶ್ವರೋಕಮಹೇಶ್ವರೋಕಮಹೇಶ್ವರೋಕಮಹೇಶ್ವರೋಕ
after the condition is met, the person gives the mango. The first person gives this person the mango. And then he just picks up and then uh, uh, as soon as he gets, he just puts it out. And he finds that that mango is not a real mango. It looks, looks like a completely real mango, but as soon as he puts it in the mouth, it's, he realizes oh, it's a rubber mango, right? But it was looking like a real mango and he was salivating. He was eagerly waiting, when I will get the mango and I will eat it. So, this is an example that, you know, obviously, physically mango is present, but it's not a real mango. But where is the real mango? In the mind. The real mango is the impression of the real mango is there. The tendency to enjoy the real mango is there. So sense objects are there in the mind also. Okay, it doesn't mean that only physically it needs to be present. So when someone uh, contemplates on the sense objects, think about the sense objects. So what happens is attachment develops. Uh, little attachment will will develop. It can be any sense object. Then uh, because we have five uh, like uh, working senses, knowledge acquiring senses. Five knowledge acquiring senses. So, and for every sense, there is a sense object. For example, for eyes, there is sight. Any beautiful object we like to see. So, that's, that is sense object. For nose, it is nice smell. So, anything which is producing nice smell, we would like to smell it. So, that is sense object. For every sense, there is a sense object. So, as soon as we start thinking about a sense object, contemplation starts, attachment develops. Second uh, stage. As the attachment increases and increases and increases, then lust grows, lust breaks up. Lust means we want to badly pursue that. We want to, we want to get it at any cost. Whatever may, requ may be required, is I will do it. I just want to get that object of attachment, uh, of sense object. So when uh, lust develops and the person actually starts to pursue, then action comes in and he starts to act. So, anger comes at the end, when it is unfulfilled, when, he, when the person doesn't get it. Or another scenario is there, when the person gets it, okay, let's say the person was pursuing and he gets it, whatever sense of it. And after getting, after some time, he loses it. Then also the anger comes, right? So when, uh, uh, so both the scenarios, the anger comes. So ultimately, lust has to end up in anger. That is because everything is temporary. Even if we get something, when we pursue something and we get it, still we will lose it after some time. And lamentation will happen and then anger will come at the end. So lament, uh, anger has to come. And if you don't uh, get it, then also anger comes. So that's how, from the sense objects, this whole chain is there. When you start contemplating, attachment develops. Attachment increases and increases. Then lust develops. And we start pursuing that lust, then whatever it may be, anger comes. Now, further, if we continue in next verse, this is 62. In verse number 63, 2.63, again Krishna continues the same. It's a flow starting from sense objects and then uh, we are continuing. When anger uh, develops, so there's a verse, uh, it goes like this. Krodha, so that, that previous verse ended with anger. Now the next verse starts with anger. Krodhar bhavati sammoha. Krodhar bhavati sammoha. That after krodh or anger, what comes? Sammoha. Sammoha means the person gets bewildered. Moha. He gets bewildered in his consciousness. Means he is not able to now um, like uh, think what is right, what is wrong. And the complete bewilderment comes. Basically covering comes. So his uh, stability is, is lost. He is disturbed now. So bewilderment. And then Sammohat Smriti Vibramaha. So after Sammoha, that is bewilderment, Smriti Vibramaha. Smriti, Smriti means memory. So the memory gets lost. Obviously that is not mentioned here. So between bewilderment and loss, uh, loss of intelligence, uh, smriti vibhra means the person will lose uh, his memory. Lose his memory because in, in what terms? He will not be able to think, like for example he was following some principles of life in life and then he will not be able to really think about that and then get back to that state, stable state and you know apply brain and intelligence. He will not be able to do that. So memory goes away. <laughs> 
the memory gets uh, lost or bewildered. And then uh, after the next stages, after that, Smriti Bra Brahmashar, Smriti Brahmashar Buddhi Nasho. When the Smriti um, uh, is or memory is bewildered or memory is lost, then what happens? Buddhi Nasho means loss of intelligence. The person will not be able to apply intelligence or utilize his intelligence. Intelligence will be covered. So buddhi nasho. And then what is right, what is wrong, how should I respond in this situation? Should I step back? Should I stop or pause? Think and then respond. He just reacts without thinking. So loss of intelligence. And then finally, buddhi nasha pranashyati. He is ready to do anything and everything. To pursue that lust. Obviously, anger has come, and then uh, when anger comes again, he may he may redevelop that desire, and then again per start pursuing that. Or anger may result in anything else also. It may result in some crimes or some activity which will destroy him ultimately. So that is the result of. So pranashyati means. Pranashyati means uh, uh, pranashyati uh, destroyed. Kind of surrender. No, no, pranashyati means destroyed. That is prapadya, prapadya, prapadyante. This pranamam means that it is not good. Mm. This is pranashyati means uh, destroyed. For example, in uh, nectar of destruction also, mm. there is words right? Uh, shadbir, shadbir bhakti, pranashyati, huh? ah. something like pranashyati. So it means uh, by these six uh, kinds of activities. The bhakti is destroyed or covered. Okay, so that's what happens. Like it starts with so where it is starting, everything, this whole flow is starting. It is starting with sense object and contemplation on the sense object. The person is continuously thinking about a sense object. <coughs> if I enjoy it, it'll be so nice. I'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it. So I get happiness. So it starts contemplating, thinking about it continuously. That's when, uh, that's where it, this whole game starts. And then finally attachment, lust, anger, and then bewilderment of uh, the consciousness, and then memory is lost, loss of intelligence, and finally he is doomed in the material existence. And he's able ready to do anything for that. Right, so this is the flow. So where, uh, when we realize, uh, like, um, okay, now, uh, after looking at this flow, where should we focus more? Should we like start contemplating and then when we actually get into lust, then we should stop? No, 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 I'm getting into lust. Let's, let me stop here. Should we do like this or let's, let's let the anger come? <laughs> and then when the anger comes, then I will stop myself. No, no, no. Now the anger has come. I saw that chart, right? Um, uh, contemplation, sense object contemplation. Then uh, we have attachment, then lust, and then anger. Oh, now I'm at the fourth stage. Now let me stop, otherwise uh, Pranash Shakti. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, when should we stop? Uh, so, uh, previously we have discussed the intelligent people of the first time decide. Kar hai. Hmm. So, uh, like, first thing we, sh uh, we should not get too attached with anything. Hmm. So basically, uh, at the first step only, uh, uh, an intelligent person will cut it off, the, cut it off the whole flow, cut, it, cut the whole flow at the first stage itself. He will not contemplate from it. As soon as the contem okay, contemplation may start, because it's natural, right? Sense gratification uh, tendency is there. As soon as you see some sense object, naturally the contemplation starts. That uh, you know, that natural starting we cannot uh, stop, but at least as soon as we start thinking about it, then you should realize, oh no, no, the contemplation has started. Just let me stop. Because uh, uh, if attachment develops and it increases, then it's very difficult to step back. So, so this thing, like when we have come to the contemplated that is mango is there, I can enjoy the mango. So I was just thinking mango has come and I may be contemplating. So attachment, like sense object is there and contemplating. Attachment is also there. So how do we differentiate that you have been attached or you are just contemplating this? If the desire is developing to enjoy it. So contemplation means? Contemplation is, so contemplation will start, uh, um, like very strong desire is not there, but uh, little 
little a little just thought you know thought starts and then uh, at the starting actually the thought may be the thoughts may not be very 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 strong the desire may not be very strong mm-hmm. but as uh, as we continue to uh, as, as we continue to go deeper into the aspects of a mango <laughs> then <laughs> then actually attachment uh, increases or develops so that it means when we go in the the details of narrative yeah, yeah. of enjoying yeah. with various ways then it may be it starts planning mm-hmm. that this is how I will go to IPC and then I will lot of mangoes get there and I'll, I'll ask the, you know, some cooked devotees if you want to just secretly give me one mango <laughs> and I'll then go to some place where nobody's seen it and just peel it off and then it's a bit juicy the sherry mango <laughs> or maybe without peeling only I'll just suck it I'll suck the whole juice and I'll not even uh, uh, leave any drop out of it. So tasty. The last time when I ate it, it was so nice. When we start develop, uh, thinking like this, as look, see, when we started uh, thinking about mango, at the starting the desire was not very strong. The details were not very uh, very great. Mm-hmm. But when we start getting into details, then the attachment develops. We we can realize it. We get a desire. So as well as attachment from different desire. Uh, means I have seen, like I have observed in myself the, the cases of attachment or anything in the last we say. So you are not able to differentiate family for the hair. It's a different reason. But the thing is, like sometimes we have not enjoyed it. Last time we have done okay. it. But just because of hearing from someone, we also did the same uh, no, hankering. Yeah. So like I have not tested mango, I don't know. But mm-hmm. someone said it looks like this and you know, you will say, say you will get this, you will be getting this much of this and this much of enjoyment. Mm-hmm. So we, then we start contemplating and then we start uh, developing that attachment, like whatever yes. I think. Yes. So how do we, uh, if someone, we are not tested, so it, it is a safe situation for us. We are not tested anything. So we can be a little more safer. So is there anything that we can do in order to cut little more protection? Like someone is explaining what he has been tested and subject, uh, whatever he has done, maybe. But you are saying a case where we have not uh, enjoyed that. No, we have not enjoyed that. But we are but, hearing about it. Uh, but some. Okay. Because of something we we are we the way uh, before coming to the Krishna consciousness, we see that whoever is explaining, we are just having. Uh, so many but we are doing the same thing. So whenever is, someone says, even in the childhood, also, we are not having any knowledge. But we go, oh, what is this? Yeah, obviously. Because we have, we have that eagerness right, to know and then to, to pursue something. Yeah, so like we need to understand this only that uh, uh, we, need, we need to apply intelligence whether it will be good for me or not. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, at the starting of the intelligence is required. How do we cut it? Cut the contemplation with intelligence. 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 intelligence has to be there. For that, intelligence should be strong. We'll discuss ahead that how, uh, when we are not spiritually strong, so intelligence is uh, working under mind. <laughs> but actually, it should be opposite. Right. Intelligence should direct the mind because mind can think anything. Thinking, willing, feeling is an activity of the mind. But intelligence, intelligence is about what is right, what is wrong, to take decisions. Yes. Mind cannot take decision. Mind is mind can just think. Can, you know, it can propel us to feel something, to think about something, or to desire something. But whether it's right or not, should I do it or not, this whole analysis intelligence does. Right? So at the at the very start, if our intelligence is not strong, then we will surely be uh, will be dragged into this flow. And when as soon as we get into the flow, then it's automatic. The material nature just pushes us. And as soon as lust comes, then it's very difficult. So intelligence has to be there. And lust, like how, uh, how can we identify in ourselves whether we are reached to the state of lust for that particular thing? Lust means I'm hankering for it. Oh. I want to enjoy it badly. badly. And uh, you know, yeah, the bad desire is there, strong desire is there. I want to just enjoy it. And I'm able to uh, figure out the intelligence is lost, right? I mean, intelligence is not there. I'm not able to apply, apply my intelligence and then get out of it. Even if it is wrong, but I still am pursuing it. Without applying the intelligence, without proper analysis, so that is lust. Strong desire to enjoy something, and if 
If some, but something comes in between, then we'll just uh, <laughs> we will destroy that person or destroy that. I just want to pursue it that without proper analysis, without applying it till that. When desire is very strong, mm. without analysis, then that is best. I just want to enjoy it. Intelligence. Yeah. Intelligence factor of intelligence is very important too in the soul flow. So yeah, that is best. Even in the starting year too, we have to how do we cut off? Without intelligence, without proper intelligence, we cannot cut off. Your intelligence has to be strong. Then only we can cut off. Yeah. So this is the whole flow. So at the starting, we need to cut off. Um, yeah. So sometimes it is seen that. So that's why at the when we see a sadhaka, right? A sadhaka means who is doing a sadhana. So we are all sadhakas. Like we are trying to. Uh, purify ourselves by, by uh, following the process of Krishna consciousness and ultimately attain the goal of life. So when we do the sadhana, so the initial phase of sadhana is about this only, about cleansing the consciousness, cleaning the mind, because the mind is dirty. The mind is dirty with the, with the thoughts of self gratification, with lust. Already we have developed lust for so many things, so many things around, for so many sense objects. So. To cleanse this whole baggage, whole, all the samskaras which we have already inside our system. So the initial phase of sadhana goes into that and cleansing happens. Right? Cheto Dharmana Mahajana, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said in Shikshashtra, first verse itself. That when we chant the Hare Krishna Mahaprabhu, when we practice this Krishna sadhana, we follow, then uh, at the initial phase cleansing happens. Then we, you know, slowly, slowly the samskaras will go away. So it will take a, you know, some time to get rid of it. And then after that, the real stability comes. When the cleaning happens, when the consciousness is clean now, then we'll be able to actually, you know, experience higher states of Krishna consciousness. So uh, sometimes it is it happens that when we are in the initial phase and cleaning is happening. So it may look like, you know. Uh, Earlier, uh, when I was not practicing Krishna consciousness, yes, yes. so I was not getting these many thoughts to enjoy. It can be anything, can be sexual desire, it can be any urge to eat something very nice. <laughs> I was not having uh, you know, such a strong or many, many desires. But now when I'm practicing, so many desires are coming. From where it is coming? Is Krishna consciousness working or not? This question many people ask. And uh, we can experience this. The, the, the sense gratification desires increase when we start practicing Krishna consciousness in the initial phase, obviously, not later. Why it happens? So there is a very nice example which is given. Uh, when let's say we have locked this house, let's say everybody goes to Mayapur Yatra and all this for only one week, but let's say for one month we are out and then we are coming back after one or two months, let's say the whole uh, it happened actually. Uh, you know when I I was in Gaziabad and when I left the room I went to home. I again came back, it was, everything was dusty, so much dust on the, everywhere, on the floor and everywhere. So, when I was cleaning, so the dust was coming up. When we start grooming, whatever the dust comes up, right? And uh, so, uh, and when we, when we entered the room, when the dust was on the floor, we were not very much disturbed, right? very stable. I am not feeling, uh, you know, dust is going in my nose, no? it was very nice. Because dust was settled down on the floor. But as soon as I started grooming, the dust started coming up. And I was feeling disturbed because of it. So was, uh, should I continue with cleaning or should I just stop because of disturbance? Is the question. Should I continue cleaning the room? The dust is coming up and the grooming and the whole hall, all, all the dust is coming up and I'm feeling very uncomfortable because of the dust. Should I stop grooming or should I continue? Continue. Till the time the whole dust you know, goes away, goes out from the room. So like this it happens. And when after the whole dust goes away, then the floor will be very clean, it will shine. Right? But there will be some disturbance, phase of disturbance in between. Now, when everything the dust was settling down on the floor and it was dirty, the floor was dirty. And after after that the stage will come when the whole floor was very will be very nice, clean, and the dust will also be removed. But in between there will be, be a stage when I was cleaning the room, the whole dust was coming and I was feeling so uncomfortable because of the dust, in the air, right? dust in the 
and the engineering business. So this uh, this stage comes in the Sadhika's life also when uh, when he practices, starts practicing in the initial phase, the samskaras which are there they start coming up. Because cleaning is happening, huh? so dust is coming, dust of all samskaras start coming up, coming up. And then we feel more lusty about everything. <laughs> Then uh, this question will come, oh, should I continue to start? Should I continue practicing Krishna consciousness? Or should I leave? What is this happening? Why is this happening? I'm practicing, but uh, I'm getting more desires to enjoy sense gratification. So, but actually, under guidance, if we practice, then we, we realize this point that um, uh, the dust will go away, the samskaras will be cleansed after some time. And the stage will come when the whole consciousness will be cleansed. And will be completely sta uh, stable in Krishna consciousness. The mind will be so pure. Chaitra will be pure. So that stage will come. And then you will realize. So for that we need to stay in Krishna consciousness. We need to continue. So that's why we should not get demotivated. It will happen. When we continue, when we practice sincerely, by the way. If we don't practice sincerely, it will not happen. <laughs> desire to get rid of those samskaras. We are struggling, right? We have a desire that yes, Krishna, I want to uh, completely get, completely become pure and I want to attain pure devotional service. When we have the desire and then samskaras bother us a lot because we had, you know, we had a lot of experiences from past, from our past life. Past life means in this life only, I think. So many things we have done. So because of those samskaras, we may get demotivated, obviously. But the only thing we have to do is we have to, we have to be in the association of devotees. And you know, try to observe those devotees who are actually uh, have crossed a lot of uh, you know this kind of stage, and they can help us. When we, we just by seeing them, we'll be able to stabilize ourselves. I was hearing a lecture um, on envy uh, by the way, Radhanath Maharaj. So, <laughs> and I was hearing, I was thinking, oh my God, this envious nature is there, envious you know, nature to feel envious about other living entities. And obviously, uh, primarily because we are envious of Krishna, so that is reflecting everywhere. You know, we are envious of devotees many times, and then it comes to, it, it comes everywhere. I am demotivated, I mean, I have that nature, so that tendency, now how to really get rid of it? And so, the next moment, Maharaj told that, uh, don't get demotivated. <laughs> That's passive, okay, something is coming. He told that, don't get demotivated. Uh, and he told about association, or he told that, um, you know, try to just, uh, you know, endeavor. There, uh, you know, because when we take, get demotivated, we will not be able to move ahead. And uh, there is no other option but to move ahead in life, right? Why to stop? Why to go back? Or why to just go down? We, there is no other option. We have to move ahead. We have to cleanse our consciousness. And if, because Shastras are saying, so it is clear that there is something called pure devotion service. It, it exists. And there are so many nice pure devotees of Allah. 
so many case studies are given so if you look at those case studies and in real life also we see some devotees advancing in krishna consciousness that gives the uh, the motivation and then we endeavor we also endeavor start endeavoring and you know in that endeavor also we get some bliss some uh, joy actually so you know that is a so we we should uh, stop there we, we should just be in the position of devotee that's the main important thing and then we should uh, hear and uh, listen more about that particular aspect if we are being we are struggling we are uh, we can take guidance also from the seniors and then uh, we should move ahead that's it we should endeavor and pray to the lord finally that please krishna is going through this bothering state i want to get rid of it please help then krishna helps krishna should help <laughs> so that is only association of devotees uh, trying to uh, uh, read scriptures and see the case studies like how what is pure devotee how pure devotees are there and uh, this is true in this the state exists and the live devotees we can see who are really advanced in their consciousness and they are very very pure and they are heading towards pure devotion service so when we see that we get motivated we get inspired to practice and we also see some transformation right it's not that no transformation we will see we practice also even in the in this state when we when the dust is coming up still we will be able to see some transformation if we are sincere yes. so that transformation also helps that is yes yes krishna is helping me so that motivates us to move ahead yes so that is it right so like this uh, we can focus on the first step which is contemplation of sense and sense and then cut it off with the intention now this is a very uh, this from the from a from the purport of uh, bhagavad gita 3.37 shila prabhupad uh, writes someone can read this well now she is done satisfied his sons into what what he will transform into the illusion and illusion uh, continues the mental existence therefore lost is the greatest inner enemy of uh, the real entity and it reveals the lost from the which induce the pure living entity to remain uh, intact like uh, in the material world so what is the manifestation of the mode of ignorance the mode exhibits themselves uh, as the work and other so mm-hmm. that's yeah, the next one continues uh, if therefore the mode of passions uh, instead of being uh, degraded into the mode of ignorance is elevated to the mode of ignorance by the prescribed method of living acting uh, and acting and then uh, one can be saved from uh, degradation of course by spiritual attachment hmm. so now we have sushila who is telling you that how lust comes in the in verse number 36 uh, we saw that uh, lust comes because of uh, it's it's a manifestation of mode of passion okay now when we are in mode of passion either we can go down to mode of ignorance we have a choice or either we can go to mode of goodness we can switch switch means we have option now it's our own choice <laughs> if we uh, start pursuing that lust and if anger comes and then the bewilderment of memory intelligence gets lost and then uh, then for sure we'll be going we'll be going into mode of ignorance for sure it's a complete uh, part of it mode of ignorance because at the end when the memory is uh, is bewildered and intelligence is lost person will will be doing anything for that You know, for that particular, because of that anger, because of that state, so that it results into illusion. So that is ignorance. That is illusion. Because anger, by the way, anger is a manifestation of mode of ignorance. Lust is a manifestation of mode of passion. So from the lust, we are going towards anger. That is, we are going towards mode of ignorance, clearly. But when we cut it off, then we have option to go in, to go up, into mode of goodness. when we we have when the when the intelligence is calm then we can realize that yes and let me uh, let me not get into this whole flow <laughs> let me switch it over and then uh, let my consciousness be stable and then and let me go towards mode of goodness or to good ignorance because simple anger means mode of ignorance lust is mode of passion so naturally from mode of passion we go into ignorance naturally we have seen also when we are angry right we do anything we are not able to realize what we are doing and then finally we end up in ignorance <laughs> it is some nonsensical activities 
So that is the result. It's anger itself is a anger itself is mode of ignorance. So. Because the person is covered. Mode of ignorance means covered, covered consciousness. He's not able to realize that uh, what am I doing? Who am I? <laughs> Forget about who am I, what am I doing currently? That also is not able to realize. So that is ignorance. Covering. So the last question we had is this thing can be um, can be categorized in stages or it is as it is anger it is we are completely you know sometimes we see that anger is just little we have little our intelligence but we are not telling me more written at that time no 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 he has done this thing I have to do this yes, yes. sometimes uh, we we remember the philosophy this is you are not this is he is a devotee mm -hmm. he is a smart so at that time just how can he do this <laughs> how can because that time our that contemplation the intelligence comes in yeah. Uh, so uh, that is simple, like when, when a person, because see, the modes of, we discussed in the last session, right, that uh, all these three modes, it's not that a person is completely into ignorance, completely into passion, completely into goodness. It's a combination. And every person is having different combination. Some people have mode of goodness, um, percentage more. Like for example, 60% is in goodness all the time. And then 20% ignorance, 20% passion. Some people are in mode of passion completely and then very less goodness. So as 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 uh, the mode of goodness factor increases, the percentage increases, then this uh, thought process will come. The person will be able to stop, pause, when the anger is starting, and then you will be able to realize, oh, let me stop and let me think. Whether should I should I respond or should I react? Should I react or not? How should I react? So he will be able to think because mode of goodness is also there parallel. But when the mode of goodness is not there, what of passion is only too much, then you are not able to realize. Or ignorance has taken over. It, it, uh, goodness factor is very less. It all depends on the combination of these modes. When the goodness increases, then a person's analysis uh, will come into picture, and then thought process will come, and those things will happen. Means it's kind of uh, coming over the intelligence instead of mind taking over us. Yes, intelligence will be strong and the mode of goodness is there. That's why uh, in mode of goodness the symptom is right. He is able to see things as they are. Because intelligence becomes strong. Mm -hmm. right? And knowledge arises from within. When the knowledge arises from within, automatically uh, he will be able to stop and then analyze things in right perspective. It, it all depends on uh, which mode is I am primarily into. Yeah. Uh, if mode of goodness factor is there, then surely. Even if the anger is obviously. Uh, uh, in the next, uh, that next verse only we saw it in Bhagavad Gita. I don't remember which chapter, but there was a verse that uh, sometimes mode of passion uh, overtakes, sometimes mode of goodness overtakes, sometimes ignorance overtakes. Oh, that is, I think, uh, means the uh, 14th. Uh, means that sloka, you remember that is in, uh, I don't remember, but it is in the sense like three modes are there, uh, it is. Uh, every mode is, sometimes this mode is uh, predominating other two. Last session only we discussed. Last session only. So when the mode of ignorance, even if mode of ignorance is overriding the other two, but at that at that time also, if mode of goodness is still there, the person has a choice to uh, to. Now it depends how much mode of goodness is there. <laughs> if it is very less, then you are not able to do it. Anger will take him, take him away, or ignorance will take him away. Okay. okay, so we'll go ahead. Uh, so that's why Shina Prabhu is uh, mentioning here that. Then let's execute, let's uh, cultivate that choice. Uh, let's choose to be in mode of goodness and uh, to develop mode of goodness more and more by uh, prescribed by the by the prescribed method of living and acting. Like in our day-to-day -day lives, uh, let's uh, you know live in such a way that uh, the mode of goodness increases in proportion. And then, or obviously, when we do spiritual practices, naturally everything is there. When we practice Krishna consciousness. Now, in our base, basis, right, we are going through Vaishnav Sadachar series. So, Kathika is recording all the different sessions about etiquettes. So, when you follow the etiquettes, it has cleanliness also, internal cleanliness, external cleanliness. When you follow these, all these things, when we regulate our senses, we will discuss about it. And automatically, we, the mode of goodness increases. Right? We regulate the senses and uh, we focus on cleanliness, posterity of speech. And all these things come into picture, the mode of goodness increases naturally. And, uh, and by spiritual practice also, the mode of goodness increases. Final goal is to go above modes, <laughs> but at least mode of goodness. Mm -hmm. 
so that we can correct this and we can quickly progress in Krishna consciousness. Okay, so like and in Vedic culture, right? Uh, this uh, this whole culture was there, which was helping us to come into mode of goodness and attain the goal of life uh, ultimately. For example, a Chana Chana Pandit has said, right? Matravat Paradarishu, Paradravya Shulostravya. Like uh, any lady, any woman other than my wife, I should look at her as my mother. So, <laughs> I was just hear, uh, hearing one uh, sh uh, short video of Amrita too. So, when Mataji just, you know, she got angry. Mataji uh, was saying Mataji, Mataji. She got angry and then she was telling Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Jamal And then she told, Prabhuji, uh, I am, uh, why are you telling me Mataji? I am just 17 years old. I am not a Mataji. Then, uh, Amrita Prabhu replied and he quoted this, this particular shloka. Matravat Paradarishu, Paradarishu, Yosarvat, Atmavat Sarva Bhuteshu, Yah Pashyati, Sah Pandita. He told that uh, apart from my own wife, everyone is my mother. So, Mataji. <laughs> that's how he replies. So, very nice actually. So, that, that is the attitude in Vedic culture. One used to see every woman as uh, Mataji, you know, as mother, apart from her own you know, wife. And then, uh, naturally, Dodi Kutta was there. The, the whole you know, setup was there in different, different aspects to actually to may, uh, to uh, let us go into mode of goodness and maintain mode of goodness. But na now it's not there, right? Now, now we are, the mind is disturbed on me and we naturally into mode of fashion and all that. So that's how the Vedic culture was very, very nice. So this Dhoti Gurta is itself very nice. When you wear Dhoti Gurta, can you, can, you can you just think if, can you wear Dhoti Gurta in bar? Bar. If you want to go to bar. Someone wants to go to bar. Can you wear dhoti kurta and go? You don't get the feeling only, right? <laughs> because that is completely in mode of it's it's covered in mode of ignorance, right? Place where mode of ignorance prevails, you know, it prevails. So there, uh, this mode of goodness thing will not work. I mean, work means they will not be able, the person will not be able to feel the mode of ignorance, right? So that's how mode of, this dhoti kurta brings us in mode of goodness. And there are so many aspects in Krishna consciousness. So Srila Prabhupada has given us nice culture, the Vedic culture. So at least some aspect we are able to follow. And then uh, it helps us. Yeah, so that's how photo of goodness is very important. Okay, let's go ahead. What happens when uh, too much of lust arises? So this shloka is there from 3.38 Bhagavad Gita. We will not chant the shloka, somebody can read the translation. As fire is covered by smoke, as a mirror is covered by dust, or as an embryo is covered by a womb, the living entity is similarly covered by different degrees of this lust. Yeah. So here Krishna is telling different, different degrees of lust. So Krishna told about uh, Arjuna asked, right? Well, let's recall, recap. So Arjuna asked in 3.36 that. Um, Krishna, what is that force which is just pushing me? I don't want to commit any sinful activity, but still I'm doing it. It's like I'm feeling like some force is there which is just forcing me, pushing me in that direction. And I'm able to I'm committing sinful activity. What is that force? Then Krishna answer in 3.37 that that force is lust. Krishna has introduced lust. Now he's going into more details. Degrees of lust. Okay, so uh, Krishna is giving uh, himself three examples, you know. First is fire, just imagine, huh? just fire is blazing and then smoke is there around the fire. Okay. Second scenario is a mirror is there, on top of the mirror there is some uh, covering of dust. And then final, the third scenario is an uh, embryo, a baby is there, embryo is there inside the womb of a mother. Now just let's try to imagine, let's try to look at these scenarios. When we see a fire and a smoke is there on the fire, even if the smoke is there, we are still able to perceive that yes, fire is there. Right? We will be able to see fire, symptoms of fire. It will be visible to a great extent. Fire will be visible, even if smoke is covering the fire. Right? And if we just try to do something like this, and then the smoke will go away, and then we will be able to clearly see the fire. The second uh, scenario dust on the mirror. So when, uh, when let's say, imagine like a mirror is there and completely discovered by the dust. 
So we'll not be able to figure out whether mirror is there or not, right? We'll not be able to see our reflection. But if we, uh, you know, take a cloth and just try to wipe the dust, then immediately we'll be able to see it's a mirror, and it will reflect. Mirror will start executing its function. And then third case is, so we have an increasing degree <laughs> of uh, what is it, dullness. And the third case is uh, womb covered, sorry, embry embryo covered by the womb. You know, when we are we able to see the embryo inside the womb because womb is, is a thick covering, right? It's a gross covering. We're not able to see. We we you know go and try to see the embryo or the baby, we'll not be able to see. It's a thick covering around the womb, around the embryo. So this is how Krishna is explaining the lust. Just as some example. So a lust a person can can have less degree of lust. Another person can have some little more degree. Other person has can has can, you know can have a, a very great degree of lust to a great extent. So the degree increases like smoke on the fire. If you do a little bit like this, the the covering will go away. Covering of smoke. It will be able to clearly see the fire. Right? So basically, lust degree of lust is very small. If you just clean a little bit, if you just give do like this, and the lust will go away. Cleaning will happen. Mirror uh, by the dust. A little more effort we have to put have to take a cloth and you know, wipe it nicely. Then we will be able to see the mirror. So basically, the degree is increasing. The uh, dust, the degree of dust on dust, you can see in our case. It is increasing, but still we can wipe it off. Still we can clean it. But final case is very thick, very thick covering of dust. We are not able to see only. The embryo is not visible. The womb is, cover, womb is covering the embryo, very thick covering. So that takes a lot to cleanse that, that degree of lust. And uh, from the scriptures we come to know that in the human form of life, the degree of lust is very less. Like we can actually easily clean it. So we can easily clean it. But as, as we go down in the species, other species, animals, and then we finally, we, when we go down to trees, they have a lot of covering of lust. Like, uh, they are jad. They are just kind of jad. See, when the degree of lust increases, the dullness increases. Dullness in the consciousness increases. The consciousness becomes dull. More and more dull and dull. Right? So that's how Krishna is explaining here. That uh, they are directly proportional as x axis is lust, y axis is dullness in the consciousness. As the lust increases, dullness also increases. We know more about that. Jara. The next verse, can someone read? Thus the wise living entities, pure consciousness become covered by his eternal enemy in the form of lust, which is never satisfied and which burns like fire. Yeah. So here Krishna is telling, uh, 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 like, um, can we satisfy lust anytime? No. Yeah. Krishna is saying this, that it is never satisfied, we, know, we cannot satisfy and it burns like fire and now, now if the fire is burning and then if we put more and more fuel into it, what will happen? It will increase, it will just increase, not uh, go down, right? So the fuel will uh, increase the fire. So this fuel is like, fuel is less, basically. Uh, can we, or sense gratification, sorry. That is less only. So the less will increase more and more. If you fueling, if you keep keep on fueling the lust, right? Sense gratification desires will increase more and more. One desire will lead to another desire, and another desire, and another desire, and keep on. We'll never be satisfied. And we can see also, right? When we are small, so then people say that oh, when you uh, do, you know, when you when you complete your schooling nice, you study nicely, then uh, you know, you'll be able to get a good college, and then you'll get into it, and then. Uh, when you get employed or when you do whatever like some career you have a good career then you will be you, you we can say that you are successful and then as soon as we go there still we feel that no still i'm not satisfied and then uh, i want hike waiting for acrs and hikes and years so in our company many people are leaving now because in sandisk and so many people are leaving because and uh, because like uh, uh, from two years, I think from one and a half years, you know, they didn't give any hike. So, like people are uh, complaining, people, so, but the leaders are saying, no, no, the good times will come, and then, 
It'll happen here yeah, eventually. Yeah. So they're saying, and then uh, they're bringing, now they've started bringing some, you know, some uh, financial, uh, what is it, compensations. So people are leaving because of it. Because people, people want it. Mm. They, uh, they, they are not like, I'm satisfied with this much. I want more and more. So that is the nature of lust. When we are attached to it, when we have the lust, so we will never be satisfied. And then some, when we think, now my manager was saying that you know, I have taken a villa and uh, I have taken so many loans, uh, so much of loan. So, and, uh, you know, uh, and I don't know how the prices are increasing too much in Bangalore. The two BHK is uh, 1.5 crore. What is this nonsense? And then three BHK is going above two crores. What is this? And villa is like too much. And then he says bought and then he has taken a loan and then he was just lamenting over it or was disturbed about it. I was saying last on uh, Thursday when I went to office in India, <laughs> he was uh, sharing that. So people are not satisfied. And they, they think that oh, if I earn more, I will get happiness. You know, if I settle my children, mm -hmm. then happiness will come. Then settling, settling of children, you know, the, uh, money goes away in that. And then also energy and time goes away. The whole life, is, life goes away like this. We don't know how we will die. Right? And then uh, finally, some people also think that, oh, uh, maybe my children may not be able to do something for my grandchildren. Let me only save for my grandchildren. <laughs> and then they are, uh, for that person is only saving for the grandchildren also, for future, 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 next to next generation. So this is going on, and there's no satisfaction at all. So that's why uh, the scriptures recommend that we should just do our duty. Whatever prescribed duty is, we should do it nicely. But we should also realize finally that uh, uh, what is our eternal duty? Eternal duty. Because these duties are temporary. Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, whatever prescribed duties are there. They are all you know, temporary. Body is temporary. But what is my eternal duty? Which will which will be applicable after I leave this body, next life also. Or maybe if I go back home, back to work, there also it will be applicable. Every time it will be applicable. Eternal. What is my eternal duty? That should be given more importance. That is eternal duty. Instead of just uh, uh, spending uh, more focus, more time in our prescribed duties or material duties. Obviously we have to do, but uh, parallelly we have to uh, think that how can I spend more time in, uh, in my education or fulfilling my eternal duty also. That is also very important. Okay, so this is one, uh, one lecture of Srila Prabhupada. No, this is for purpose for, for, from 3.39. Therefore, this lust is a symbol of ignorance by which the living entity is kept within the material world. While one enjoys sense gratification, it may be that there is some feeling of happiness. But actually, that so called feeling of happiness is ultimate enemy of the sense entity. Mm -hmm. Now, someone may ask, right? People, when we go for book distribution or past experience, so many people actually reply like mm -hmm. this that I'm happy. Uh, sometimes I ask like this. So it's a, uh, you know, please take Bhagavad Gita. It's a message of love. You know, when we will get real happiness in life. Then they say, I'm already happy. <laughs> now, what are, actually, some people are ever in mode of goodness and uh, you know, they may feel that, yes, I'm happy. Uh, and obviously, that comes. We have seen the symptom of mode of goodness, right? Uh, like, uh, it, it gives a sense of happiness. It was written, Krishna mentioned that. That's a symptom of uh, mode of goodness. A sense of satisfaction comes in life and happiness comes. Uh, even if we do little sense gratification also, pleasure comes, right? we get pleasure. So happiness is there. It's not that there is no happiness in this material world, it's there. But, but still why, uh, you know, why Krishna is saying that, you know, he should not hanker for such material happiness. Why? This question comes, right? Why? Because it leads to more and more entanglement. How? And why? So this question is answered in the next time. This is a lecture of uh, Srila Prabhupada in New York, uh, 1966. Very initial lectures when he went to New York, when he went to the, uh, uh, from, uh, for one, I think, uh, this fifth chapter. Bhagavad Gita 5.22. Tell them please. If one practices to tolerate the so-called urges of sense pleasure, then he becomes very happy at the long run. He, he recommends it and that is the real purpose of human form of life. 
that we should not derive. We should not try to derive the false happiness in the desired and diseased condition of material life. This is temporary. This is not happiness. We should understand that our that out of ignorance we are engaged to derive such kind of happiness, but that is not happiness. Real happiness is in spiritual life. Mm. So Srila Prabhupada is mentioning here this is temporary. You can see here, this is temporary. Even if there is some kind of happiness, little bit of happiness we get, pleasure we get, right? when we eat something, obviously, as soon as we eat, we get have pleasure. So that's a reality. That's reality. Uh, but, uh, but that is temporary. Uh, this we need to understand. So even if someone says that I'm happy, then we can say, okay, that happiness is temporary. <laughs> it will go away after some time. That happiness will go away, for sure. Right? So when we understand this philosophy, it's philosophy, right? Uh, and it's uh, real, uh, we can see in uh, real life also. That when, when we do some sense gratification, we get pleasure. It's not that we don't get pleasure. We cannot say that our material uh, world doesn't give us happiness. No. It gives us happiness, but that happiness is temporary. So that's factual. That's the reality. So when we understand this, when we start realizing this, man, this is, everything is temporary here. I don't, I will never get happy completely or permanently. Everything is temporary. When we start realizing this point, in second chapter only Krishna starts with it, right? Madras Parishas to Kaunteya, Shitoshna Sukhanukada, Agama Payana Vectis, Tam Stitikshaza Bhanda. There also Krishna is telling that be tolerant if happiness comes or distress comes because everything is temporary. Happiness is also temporary. And even distress is also temporary. If someone uh, goes into distress, we should understand that oh, this space is temporary. Again, happiness will come. So like that. So everything is temporary here. So that's why if a person understands this, then um, he will he will realize that if I get settled here only with this temporary happiness, temporary pleasure, then like what is permanent? This question should come. You know? So that is ignorance if we are get, if we get settled here. <laughs> so we should ask this question: What is permanent? Where is permanent happiness? Spiritual life can give us real and permanent happiness. That's what Shri Prabhupada is mentioning. And we can see. And by the way, uh, even if, you know, in this material world, we start regulating our senses, those people who are uh, regulated in their lifestyle, they are also a little more happier than others. So in this material world, only if we start regulating our life, then also happiness increases. Even in the material life, can you imagine? What to talk of spiritual life, which is permanent, which gives us permanent uh, happiness. So that's the actual life, actual enjoyment. So whenever we are in this material world till the time, we have to regulate our, because we have the body. So regulation of senses is needed, regulating the lifestyle. Then happiness, in the long run happiness will get in this material world also. But that is also temporary again. But our ultimate happiness is in spiritual life, so that we need to understand. And we can see also, right, when we have nice prasad, hey, what is it, Krishna consciousness, we have nice prasad, we dance, we you know, attend kirtan, we have kirtan, sing kirtans, and then um, we have like nice discussions, you know, on scriptures. And that also gives us real happiness, you know, bliss. So that's that's Krishna consciousness. And it's eternal. This activity will go on forever, will never stop. Even if, we, even if we are in the material world. Because forever we are servants of Krishna. So we will continue to do it. There's no stoppage. So I mean we cannot think about the end of this activity. That's what is permanent. So that is far away. But this thing you should know that uh, we should be trying to see that what is permanent, what is temporary, and this is little pleasure we are getting. Maybe we are doing some dancing and we get some benefit for this. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a very good thing. we have done how we drive and uh, again for some karma or something, we have got little more settlement and uh, more, if you can say, aligned to our desires we get, then we will be settled. So at that time, also it is like you mentioned, you know, uh, like a person, this also requires intelligence to think at that time, okay, this is not permanent, I should be very aware that yes. if I am enjoying happiness, I will try to be sad and distressed also. So, yeah. uh, for remaining happy or being stable in distressed uh, condition, we should be, uh, you know, uh, what to say, alert in case of happiness comes and something, mm -hmm. some little happiness comes. So, yes. it is also requiring kind of intelligence, I see. Yes, yes, yes. it requires. So, his question is like, uh, you know, before we go into distress, when the happiness is there, at that time, uh, actually, we should develop this intelligence that, like happiness is uh, this this state, the state of happiness is temporary. So at that time, we should you know, we should cultivate, uh, we should develop 
uh, strengthen our intelligence so that when the distress comes, that time we'll be able to realize that oh, this is also temporary. Otherwise, if our intelligence is not strong, then when the distress comes, so at that time we'll be moved away, we'll be just washed away, so it'll, it'll take us over. Yeah. So that, that's why it is mentioned that, obviously, <laughs> Kunti Maharani prays uh, for, uh, in the first canto, Kunti Maharani prays are there. So Kunti Maharani prays for more and more distress in her life. So there are more and more problems in her life so that she can practice or she can develop more attachment to Krishna. She can just think of Krishna nothing else. Every moment. Every moment there should be some distress. But obviously that is not possible for us because we know, right? We know our state. Little bit distress can be a disturbed. So obviously stability is required. Uh, there was one, uh, one I think Sunday class, youth class of me, of Harikshita Prabhuji, he was mentioning that some stability in our life is required to practice Krishna consciousness. If you're not stable, a completely devastated, it's difficult to practice on it at our stage. Obviously, a pure devotee is never bothered about material life. He's above the three modes. So for him, whatever happens in life doesn't matter. He's above bodily platform. But for us, because we are attached to the body, <laughs> attached to our mind, we have, we have so many desires, material desires, contaminations. So at that time, we have to have some stability and peace of mind to practice Krishna consciousness. To come to mode of goodness and practice it. So, mode of goodness is required for us. That's what Srila Prabhupada is recommending. Uh, we should choose to be in mode of goodness. And Krishna also recommends we should choose to be in mode of goodness. Because then, if stability or peace of mind is there, then when we are chanting, the mind is disturbed. If I, we are not able to hear the holy name because of that, then we will not advance in Krishna consciousness at all. So, peace of mind is required. Stability is required. So then when, uh, when we are practicing nicely in that state and uh, our spiritual intelligence strengthens, then when the distress comes, then we'll be able to handle it. So stability is required. When there is stable situation as of now, and then we should utilize that opportunity to intensely practice. <laughs> That's the point. When the situation in, li the situation in life is stable, or happiness is there, whatever, then we should intensify in devotional service. We should not go down. Many times it is seen that you know some people with the happiness comes, they leave Krishna consciousness. They are in their own words. When the distress comes, they will come back. Life and what disturbance, so we have difficulties and I can't go on. Many in our FOE also in festival of life, we have seen many cases where <laughs> so job was not there and people started coming. <laughs> they actually it happened. <laughs> and then uh, as soon as they, they got job, they got nice job. And then after that something happened and they got, let's say, laid off or something happened. They had to leave. Uh, what happened is when they got job, they continued, I mean, discontinued coming to our uh, RBC temple. They discontinued uh, attending classes. And then as soon as they lost the job, again they came back. <laughs> so it happened actually. Two, three, uh, we have seen at least cases. So live cases are there. So like this, if we are not uh, practicing when stable situation is there, then we moved away. By the way, we should practice more intensely when we are, when happiness is there, when we are stable. Because that time the mind is not disturbed. That is the right time to practice. Actually, we have seen one more example of a boy too, that uh, he was uh, coming, so he was asking some questions, and we had also an answer from, I, it was Vivam Prabhu who was giving this thing, and in the chat he could write that in the last, when he was not having anything, so he was discussing or arguing on something. So why should we come and have all those disturbs? Then last he says, okay, I come because I do not have enough money to go to bar and pubs. So I, I do not find anything. <laughs> <laughs> so go to bar and pubs also I don't have money. Uh, for that thing, the, the persons who are coming to your friend. Comes to temple, that's why. Uh, and then Saturday, that's why he comes to temple to take prasad here and get some other views. Mm -hmm. So that also, like distress, you can see in the example, like how distress is taking into the Lord. That's why Kunti Maharaj may be asking for these persons only. Like yeah. we are we are inclined towards Lord when distress is there. Mm -hmm. That also we are not able to do in many of the cases when we see like mm -hmm. first we start with our relatives that he will yes. help me, he will help me. We will start taking shelter of other people yeah, exactly. other than Lord. So yeah, I mean we don't know right what will happen to us when distress comes. Yeah. We will not take the shelter of the Lord. It may happen. We will not be surrendered to him. That's why we should practice intensely when we are happy. So <laughs> the mind will be peaceful and we will be able to think about hearing the holy names. <laughs> and we will endeavor. So that's the 
So this is another shloka, so 36 now we have come to 39 and 40. So now here Krishna says, we will go a little uh, fast now, only few slides are remaining. So here Krishna says, okay now we have understood lust. Okay, we have understood that lust is the greatest enemy of a person, which is pushing the person to do sinful activity, right? And we have seen degrees of lust. And also in the previous shloka we saw, uh, or in the in the degrees of lust and it can never be satisfied. We have seen. So now Krishna is also now again continuing. So Krishna is saying that now the question arises: Where is this lust existing in our existence, in our gross or subtle body, wherever? So we can ask this question: Where is lust? Where is it in our existence? So Krishna answers this question. So Krishna says the senses, Krishna, uh, there are three places where the lust is there, or lust is present, or sitting, we can say. So what are these three places? The first three words, Indriyani, Mano, Buddhiyani. Then uh, Asya, Adhishthanam, Uchyate. Adhishthanam means, Adhishthanam, it means sitting, to, you know, to settle down. <laughs> so where the lust is settling down or sitting? In these three places, Indriyani, Mano, Buddhi. Indriyani means Indriya, means uh, senses, our senses, right? See, lust is there in the senses also. And then Mano, in the mind also, lust is there. And then in the Buddhi also, in the intelligence. So these are the three places where lust is sitting. And obviously, uh, the lust covers the real knowledge of living entity, as we have seen. And it's bevelled in the Intelligence also lust is there. Yeah, lust is there in the intelligence. We have to purify the intelligence, obviously. Oh. But, but when the when the intelligence is covered, yeah. so it is covered by lust. So we were uh, thinking like if we are having an anger situation, we should be taking the sector of intelligence, intelligence. Mm -hmm. and mind. Ah, okay. That is also under that. Ah. Ah, that's what that's what Krishna said in the next verse also. Mm -hmm. See. Yeah, there is one verse in uh, money is above in three. Uh, uh -huh. is above yes. one. Krishna says in the next verse only mm -hmm. to clarify this. Uh, so, okay, so first of all, uh, before going to that, uh, in this 3.40 only from purport, Srila Prabhupada is writing the purport, so we can read that. The enemy has captured different strategic positions in the body of the conditioned soul, and therefore, Lord Krishna is giving hints of those places. So that one who wants to conquer the enemy may know where he can be found. Mind is the center of all the activities of the senses and thus when we hear about sense objects, the mind generally becomes a reservoir of all ideas of sense gratification. And as a result, the mind and the senses becomes, become the uh, repositories of lust. Okay. Another one. Continue. Next, the intelligence department becomes the capital of such lustful propensities. Intelligence is the immediate next door neighbor of the spirit soul. Thus, the intelligence influences the spirit soul to acquire the false ego and identify itself with matter. And thus, with the mind and senses, the spirit soul becomes addic addicted to enjoying the material senses and mistakes and and we state this as a true happiness. So nicely Shila Prabhu is explaining that uh, actually our senses by nature, our senses and mind and intelligence all are lusty. <laughs> Lust is sitting in all the three places. So what happens is, uh, we saw right in the chart how the whole uh, flow of this uh, entanglement starts. It starts from sense objects, coming in contact with the sense objects, the senses come in contact with sense objects and then now uh, the living entity starts contemplating about it, thinking about that sense object. Then attachment development for the lust and love and then anger and all these things. So when when the contact happens, the senses and sense objects, senses are only lusty. So because of that uh, uh, the sense objects are dragging towards the senses are dragging, dragging towards or going towards sense objects. Now as soon as that contact happens for example, the eyes have seen something beautiful, or contact has happened. And now the contemplation starts. Then mind comes into picture. The mind is also lusty. So 
means we are talking about now lusty mind senses mind and intelligence which is which are not purified we get purified when we get purified and obviously this uh, this game will turn but as of now we are talking about the lusty these lusty entities that lust is there so the mind comes into picture when we start contemplating so when we think when we think or start thinking about that sense object and then develop attachment then mind gives various ideas how to how to go about it it makes plans and then uh, we uh, like how to per, how to actually enjoy that sense of it so those ideas are there in the mind thinking right thinking feeling and willing uh, willing and feeling so uh, so lusty mind comes into picture if this lust is there it's not purified that that in that scenario so lusty mind takes over and then uh, if the intelligence is also lusty let's say it's not purified yet then what will happen is the intelligence will also align with the mind <laughs> and the spirit soul and it is mentioned that uh, intelligence is just next to spirit soul I mean, so soul can actually immediately you know he can uh, apply the intelligence and just you know take the decision but but the intelligence is intelligence is also lusty at this time so it cannot do anything and then when the intelligence is lusty or faulty then the false ego also it, it connects with the false ego instead of real ego the soul it connects with false ego instead of going towards uh, soul or the real ego it connects with the false ego the lusty intelligence it connects with the false ego and then we false ego is one that uh, it belongs to me this belongs to me and this body all these things and then again this uh, all these false identity starts false identity with the matter you start identifying with the with the matter with different things and people on this planet and then when when that uh, identification happens then this cut that is mine mere ye gaadi meri hai ye bangla mera hai ye ye body meri hai <laughs> so then when this identification because false ego is coming to picture right? false ego means identification starts happening and then the person gets completely entangled in the material world and then he is not able to get true happiness so that is the thing starts with senses lusty senses they come in contact with sense objects the mind starts thinking it's also lusty so mind gives good ideas good ideas means in that direction only okay the mind is also lusty right so it will support the senses okay go ahead this plan you can take This plan A, plan B, plan Z. We all the plans we make, and then uh, intelligence is also faulty or lusty. So intelligence, intelligence instead of going towards true uh, identity, that I'm servant of Krishna. No, no, I don't. I should not enjoy. It. It's lusty. So we go towards false ego instead of going towards true ego. And when false ego comes into picture, now it takes over, and then it, we start identifying with the matter. When identifications happen, then we you know we get completely. So that's it. This is the whole flow, which Shri Prabhupada is explaining nicely. That's why, uh, so we need to understand. Now Shri Prabhupada is explaining also here that uh, you know when we understand that yeah, these are the three target points. So we should target on these three points: senses, mind, intelligence. To because we have understood, right? We have come to know. Krishna has told us. So let's target on these uh, strategic points where lust is sitting and target and just kill the lust. Now how to do this? Krishna is telling in the next two verses. In the next verse, only Krishna is telling. Forty-one. Therefore, O Arjuna, best of the Bharatas, in the very beginning, curb this great symbol of lust or sin by regulating the senses. Krishna didn't tell that control the mind, control the mind. So many people actually ask this question: How to control the mind? <laughs> so, and many so-called motivation speakers will, you know, give so many things, and then people will. Will start to follow the level you will control them, because what happens is directly we never control the mind. Otherwise, Krishna would have directly, you know, in the this uh, previous verse, Krishna is telling that oh, senses are lusty, mind is lusty, intelligence is lusty. Okay, uh, Arjuna, kill the lust in the mind first, not senses or intelligence. Control the mind first. Krishna would have told, but no, Krishna is starting with senses. Krishna is starting with senses. That. first there are three points target points so first of all focus on senses try to regulate the senses forget about the mind it's, it's okay let the mind be disturbed no problem just try to regulate the senses focus on senses only in the beginning forget about the mind and intelligence don't don't focus on it just 
first of, first of all, just start with senses. When you regulate the senses, I am not questioning yes. the senses part, but focus on senses also comes for intelligence. Huh. Focus on senses means uh, because if we like if we are living in temple or mm -hmm. some let's say we are living in base completely we are following, so at that time we doesn't give a chance of chance to our senses to see the outside world. Mm -hmm. So in that case, it's controlled means huh. it will not go to the next level. Mm -hmm. But now we are going outside. We have to do job, but pool uh, of sense of life. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but obviously, uh, <laughs> to to focus on this point that okay, don't focus on mind and intelligence and just focus on senses. Some little intelligence is needed, obviously. Uh, otherwise, we cannot do this. Right? We cannot practice on this. So, little intelligence is needed. And Krishna gave that intelligence when we are serious in that sense. Krishna gave that intelligence. There will be so many impurities as well, but Krishna, you know, for some time he will make our intelligence purified so that we can think, come out of our lusty intelligence, we can think, okay, what is right, what is wrong, and take some action, and then uh, some benefit will get. Other, otherwise, if always intelligence is lusty, then uh, we'll never be able to come out of it. So it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, the, sometimes Krishna helps us if we are sincerely want to practice. So, and obviously, it's not that always intelligence will be lusty, like there are two sides of the coin, right? Sometimes mode of goodness will come. And uh, that time you'll be able to use that intelligence. So we have some karma factors. Karma factors is many things are there, many factors are there. But so now we are identifying ourselves as the uh, body only and we are talking. So Simply means that we have a soul and also be infected by this uh, like intelligence has got infected and that that has there is the same infection to the soul that's why we are uh, mm. soul, this false ego thing. Uh, soul never gets uh, contaminated. Mm. Actually, the covering uh, you know these are not covering over the soul. Mm. So contamination is there in the covering itself. Soul is never contaminated. Ah, that's right. Mm. But because now uh, we had the desire to enjoy. So, because of the desire, discovery has come. And discovery is not letting us, you know, the soul to show its real symptoms. That it doesn't mean that soul has become contaminated. Soul is always pure, always pure, uncontaminated. And uh, but the only thing is now the covering is very, very strong. And uh, the false ego, we have identified with the false ego. The false ego is very, very strong. And then uh, we are not able to access our true ego at all. But it doesn't mean the true ego has, we have lost it. No. So does it mean that intelligence also has been covered only? Or covered only, yes. It has been infected. Less discovery. Means it has not been infected or you know, changed something like that. It is simply that, that is as it is, but there's just to yes. uncover kind of things and then. Yes. That's what we say, no? Purifying the intelligence. Yeah. Purifying the mind. Hmm? But they are not said anything currently purifying the soul. Uh, actually, uh, there are senses, there are spiritual senses also. Yes. There is spiritual mind also, there is spiritual intelligence also. But when it is covered, all these things are covered, all these entities are covered because of lust. Mm -hmm. Lust is covered, uh, covering is lust only in general. So this means the spiritual aspect of that particular entity is covered? Ah, oh. it's covered. Yeah. It doesn't mean the spiritual aspect has been lost. It is covered. It's not able to manifest its function clearly or more clearly. But it is covered. So when the covering goes away, then naturally the symptoms will come out. The symptoms are there. As a Shiva Prabhupada used to, uh, you know, many times in his lectures he used to tell that he has told that, that we, we, all, we all have dormant love for Krishna. We all have love for Krishna. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a very nice observation. In introduction to Shri, uh, Bhagavad Gita, Shiva Prabhupada tells. Very nice observation. It gives us so much clarity. So, uh, Bams or NT7. Shiva Prabhupada writes in the Bhagavad in the introduction that Everybody is serving in this material world. Everybody. There is nobody, no living entity, even, even animals and insects and uh, plants. Everybody is serving. Nobody is, uh, we cannot find any living entity who is not serving at all. Mm -hmm. Somebody, someone or else, or else, someone or other, that living entity is serving. Every living entity is serving. Someone or other. Every time. Every moment, one is serving. We cannot get rid of the service attitude because naturally we have, we are the servants of Krishna. We are parts and parcels of Krishna, 
We have a tendency to serve Krishna, but as long as we are coming with material, tendency still there to serve. But now we are serving a mortal being only, or our own body, own mind, not others. So service is there. This tendency to serve, right? So the natural tendencies, symptoms, uh, propensities, they are there with the soul. They can never be lost. But the only thing is they are misdirected because of the karma. But soul can never get uh, contaminated. Love of God, it is there. So, cleansing, where it is happening? It is happening on the covering only. Yeah. It's not happening in the soul. Soul is naturally pure. What we need to do. Soul is pure only. Now, covering is there. So, we are just removing the covering. Just removing the covering. That's it. And it depends on how, how intense the covering is. That means that's not. That's the degree of plus. Some, some people have, some species have more covering. Even the human life also, the degrees vary. Yes. Some people naturally they are, you know, the knowledge has arisen and then the degree of lust has went down, gone down. So, um, depends. Degrees of covering, cover, uh, lust are varied. Okay. So, yeah, like this. And then, uh, I think last few slides. So, so we have to first target the senses instead of mind. <laughs> it needs intelligence, obviously, but uh, we will get it like, because we need to develop more, more of goodness. By the way, senses, regulation of senses, right? Why? Because uh, when we regulate our lifestyle, naturally, obviously, uh, the mode of goodness will increase. Whatever mode of goodness is there will increase more. And, more. and mode of goodness increases, knowledge arises, and purification happens. Of intelligence and mind also. So, uh, regulating the senses is very important. And we see when the senses are regulated, the lifestyle is regulated, naturally the mind also you know, comes under regular control. It happens. Um, I have seen in my life that when, this, when we start following regulated lifestyle, and what happens is naturally, I, mean, I was thinking actually, I was experiencing this. Uh, these days I was taking. Uh, some diet without uh, spices. Sometimes I take when there is no option. But uh, uh, but you know, whenever I have option, I you know try to take some diet which is less spicy and less oily and less masala. Not at all, no masala. So what happens is naturally the uh, the mind becomes very stable. Naturally, the mind becomes stable. And control of mind happens to a, to some extent. So peace of mind comes. <laughs> Naturally, the mind goes down, and the thoughts go down, and then some control comes into picture. So that's a fact. When regula regulations come into our lifestyle, automatically the mind control happens, and because the mode of goodness arises. That's what Krishna is telling to first regulate the senses, not mind directly, because mind is completely if senses are out of control, and we start we directly go to the mind, we'll be agitated, not be able to do it. You are controlling the right and that, uh, that helps us, that helps you to control if you are feeling the control of mind is better than whatever you are and you are not having control. So, two things are there. One thing is you are controlling the tongue. It also needs to be controlled out of the senses from the tongue. And so, the second thing is that we are not doing what mind is demanding. So, that means mind is thinking, okay, you will not be in any way, so why should I demand also? The two things we are seeing in the class. This thing you seen, uh, like we may not be having any issue with eating because we are mm -hmm. mouth maybe not to reach. So should we also start <laughs> doing the same like okay now verbal is clear, like clear but I will not be eating. Uh -huh. We should do it. If you do then it will help us to further uh, control yes. better. Uh, yes. Better and at the starting the mind is too much uh, bothering and then so we have to cut it off also sometimes. Sometimes cut, cutting it off like for example we see we uh, hear this. Uh, this uh, pro, uh, what do they call it? There's a saying in English, right? Uh, that out of sight, out of out of mind, out of, out of sight, out of mind. mind. That if we are not seeing something, naturally that thought will not come in our mind, right? So if we just try to simply cut it off, also, obviously cutting it off from the sense of this, it's not a permanent solution. Like I just want, to, I will not see a woman. How is it possible? <laughs> naturally, when you go out, we see, right? The opposite gender. But we have seen also, like we have, we can experience also. If we don't look at the opposite gender, naturally it is out of mind. 
and we don't feel lusty. But when we start seeing, then we feel lusty. So it's like when we are invited, when it is in the sight, then the mind comes into picture and we start contemplating and all those things that happen. The lust comes. But when it, when it is out of sight, then out of mind also. So at the very starting, cutting it off also help, also helps. Just cut it off. I'm not uh, enjoy. I'm not doing it. I'm not. Like Prabhuji said, ki, uh, if someone is something is cooked, we should like avoid eating that. That thing he told me ki, it, it like uh, halwa. Ah. I mean, Prabhuji started eating something because of some reason, and it helps him to control other urges of mind. Other because mind has got the experience like he is not fulfilling my wishes. So let's say halwa is created. And halwa is there at the food, and it is like. It is available for us to eat. But mind is also saying that okay, it, is, it will be nice some certain aspect when how sweet is good, sweet is very you know, delicious. And then if we are intelligent, like with a glass, like now we are doing with a glass. So we can think like okay, if I will not eat my mind, mind will get some you know, punishment kind of thing. Uh, we can say discipline. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, discipline that he will not be uh, you know, he will not be the judge, like it is to be eaten or not. I will be the judge, I will not eat. Yes. You, are, you are asking this one, I will not eat. So basically, it control, control is coming to me yeah. instead of money. <laughs> yeah. So it helps. Is it that thing that we are controlling our senses? Ki Correct. Mm -hmm. We have heard one story, Prabhu, that is just when the sand was there and he was going down. He got some uh, you know, jerebi in some you know, prayer was there. And he, he just got and he was chanting one. And jerebi was there. So he was always thinking. So he was saying, okay, I will eat you after 10 minutes, after, after completing my rounds and something like that. And he was, again, so he was just talking to him only. And after some time, he was going to Yuna and he said, okay, you take this, I will not eat. And he got to take it neem leaves at that day. He was asking, I will give you neem. So this thing I will relate with that, the way you done, it helps also. And we have seen recently in classes also. Mm -hmm. If you read it and the uh, example of Ajit uh, Kuksin Maharaj, our Guru Parampara, we groom something, uh, meet a man who is groomed in the morning. And <laughs> but he's not saying that. Oh, okay, okay. So you should tell that uh, as soon as we, I get up, I beat my mind with 100 times with the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shoes. 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 Shoes at the beginning and groom stick at the last thing which I was there. So, Obviously, so both the things help. Mm -hmm. Like cutting, off, cutting it off completely out of sight, out of mind, that also helps in the starting. It's no long term uh, solution. Sorry. Because by cutting it off, we cannot, because naturally we have to go out and we have to see the sense of it. So it's not a permanent solution, but still it helps. It helps to a great extent. In the starting, when we have, you know, senses are too much agitated and mind is too much agitated, at that time, cutting it off helps. Mm -hmm. When we just cut it off and we don't see that sense of it, or do, whatever, hear or see or smell or whatever, it helps a lot. Right? We don't get the idea to, or we don't get the thought to enjoy it. To whatever time we are. Uh, you know, out of the sign, out of the sight, or we are not smelling it, or we are not in touch with it. Basically. We are like distracting ourselves. No? Huh. Okay. Yes, whatever, in whatever way. Either uh, it's not there at all in our front of our eyes, or we are distracting ourselves, or whatever, whatever. We are cutting it off. That helps, but not, it's not a permanent solution. Mm -hmm. Obviously, then we have to slowly, slowly, whatever, when we start doing this, so we gain control over the senses. And mode of goodness also arises. Then mind also becomes a little peaceful. And then we can start uh, practicing like this, that oh, I, I can tell the mind now that uh, you want halwa, no, I'm not doing it. In the starting way, if you tell the mind, then mind will revolt. Oh, I want halwa, I want halwa, and then you will be, will be disturbed. So in the starting, that's what Krishna is saying that, try to regulate the senses. First, try to regulate the senses. Start with senses, then we can come to mind also. Then intelligence will later. So senses means to this, this way? You Gross can... senses. Uh, gross senses, like tongue is the gross sense, right? Mm -hmm. So the way we are saying we are not eating some particular amount, of, amount uh, uh, item, amount also went us, you know, that sugar was there, sugar was in there. So that amount also, uh, sorry, the tongue is trying to taste something. And we are controlling, so deliberately control tongue or mind, because you said like we should be starting with senses, and that is gross also. Mm -hmm. So gross, we had when we say that, okay, we are not eating. That is controlling of senses or mind. Obviously, here we are uh, trying to control mind also. Mm -hmm. But in the starting, it may happen that uh, you know when you are saying this, if someone is able to do this, it's good. Mm -hmm. He's he's controlling the mind also in this case. Mm -hmm. And then after some time, mm -hmm. wait, after some days, you say, okay, I will not. I will not be able to control, and then you will eat more ever than whatever it will be. More so 
that's why uh, regulated lifestyle actually anybody can follow. I mean, in the starting, instead of thinking too much, you should just focus on like uh, whatever is prescribed in the scripture, whatever is there, you know, whatever is good. Let me just do this as it is. Let me follow it. You know, even if I'm getting the urges or trying to cut it, cut it, cut it off from the sense of like that, but that will also help in, in the initial uh, phase. And then, uh, you know, try to just regulate the lifestyle, like sleeping early, waking up early, yeah. having proper sleep, eating uh, not too less, not too much, mm -hmm. a balanced lifestyle, so that I can feel satisfied also. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, the like that. rich people say that healthy lifestyle, disciplined life, so it's kind of similar thing only. Right? Similar thing, so that sense is dealing yeah. with the sense. But the mind is also there, see, you cannot directly or only say that, oh, okay, only senses we are trying to control. Obviously, the mind will also come into picture. It's not clear. But mostly, we are trying to focus more, more, more on the senses in the starting phase instead of mind. Mm -hmm. Trying to more focus on what is uh, balanced lifestyle, what is regulated lifestyle. Trying to understand that and trying to follow that. And one thing that is correct too, because mind also, you know, that even if you do not get it, this. So instead of uh, bothering too much about the mind, mm -hmm. just try to see that oh this person has done this. Let me also do this. In that way we can do. I mean, right? Instead of focusing on my mind, because my mind is uh, like I mean, it's a beast. <laughs> if I start uh, relying on my mind, it will take me away. It will not be able to, it will not allow me to practice this. Let me just you know see see him or see that example and then just let me try to follow it as it is. Without thinking too much, just try to follow it. So cut off from the senses, that is one thing, or just try to follow it. Either. It's good, thinking it through, it's good. In the long run, that's the benefit. That's, that's it, that's what we have to think. Try to just regulate the senses, that's it. Not thinking too much about mind. And obviously, when, 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 we, when we start doing it, naturally, naturally it will happen. Why Krishna is saying? Because it will happen that when we develop mode of body. Some control will happen, will come in on our senses. And then we can target our mind. Next step. Then we can do this. If mind is giving urges, we can tell the mind, stop it. I will not eat. What do you mean? Tell me, okay, I'm going to make more. Both there. Both? No, no. So we can actually do this. But in the starting, it will not work. In the starting, we may, you know, as a dikhani ke kar sakta hai ki haan, chal bol. So we can tell you later. No, you can't. So that's how it is. So it's like starting, in the starting, we should focus on senses. Mind will be even over again. Not thinking too much about mind. Yes, that means the state the of mind that that we can when we do mind is too much to start to handle. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's like you know, we are developing heavy, right? Like, so habit. It's, it's kind of habit. Yeah. It's habit. Yeah. Habit. Just so habit. We start with some intelligence, but later on it comes so easy, easy, easy. Uh, yeah. But little intelligence is needed only. Yeah. Uh, if we don't have intelligence that much, also then will not be uh, will not take twenty one days. I mean, you know, never happen. Right? Some determination and uh, intelligence. Is needed. Uh, like mix and match and argument. Mix and match is there, but where we are focusing more, that is important. Okay. And that's what is important. We are focusing more on senses, but that requires intelligence also. Yeah. Right? <laughs> to take decisions that yes, I want to pursue, I want to actually develop this habit. For that, we need determination, we need uh, intelligence as you do. So, obviously, that is there. Intelligence is also into picture, mind is also there. But where we are focusing more? Yes. We're focusing more on senses now. Let me not bother much about mind, but let me focus more on regulating the senses. The focus area, let's say, target area, that is more in senses. Then it's later mind and intelligence will come. Okay, so in, the, in that way, uh, we can actually slay this destroyer, uh, destroyer of knowledge, that is lust. And then one uh, quote, maybe I will also, I'll only read, we'll finish quickly. Lust is only the perverted reflection of the love of God, which is natural for living entity. Uh, but if one is educated in Krishna consciousness from the very beginning, that that natural love of God cannot deteriorate into lust. When love of God deteriorates into lust, it is very difficult to return to normal things. I mean, we are struggling a lot to get rid of all the impurities because of the lust. I mean, the samskaras, the covering, is, uh, it's lust only. It's very difficult. So that's why it is recommended in the starting, the very beginning only we should uh, 
start practicing Krishna as soon as possible, as early as possible. But obviously, Krishna is demotivated. Somewhere when we have crossed our 20, you know, 20, uh, 20, you know, we are now 25 or 24 or 26, 20, whatever. So, uh, right. So, we should be demotivated because Srila Prabhupada is uh, getting, uh, giving us inspiration here that Krishna consciousness is so powerful. We should think like this that, uh, you, know, you know, that those children are very fortunate. They have started practicing in the early age. What about, I have wasted my time. I cannot do anything now. I cannot practice Krishna. I cannot be, I, can be, I cannot become a cloud devotee now. It's not like that. So, Krishna is saying, uh, Srila Prabhupada is saying, Krishna consciousness is so powerful that even a late beginner can become a lover of God. Right? By following the regulated principles of devotional service. Krishna, so, Srila Prabhupada is uh, encouraging us. It's okay, no problem. You have come late, no problem. But now, from now onwards, start practicing Krishna consciousness. And for sure, we will also become pure devotees. If we practice sincerely from now onwards. Right? It's not too late. So that's what Shabbat was mentioning. You practice sincerely from? No. Now onwards. Like, no. Even if it is late, but still it's not too late. Uh, we can become, we, we, anyone can become pure devotee. And uh, so like that. So we should not be really motivated because of that. We should focus on, okay, whatever time is left now, let me give my 100%. Let me endeavor for it. And by the mercy of Krishna, I also become pure devotee. Like that. Because what is the basis? Why Srila Prabhupada is saying this? Because Bhakti is very powerful. Uh, in the last class, um, I think Wednesday class, uh, Kartika Tuli was mentioning, right? That uh, one devotee met him that, I met him and told him that, I think he discontinued uh, Krishna consciousness and because he started eating meat again. And he stopped and again started eating meat and then he, he told that I cannot uh, come in the front of devotees, in front of devotees. And I cannot, I'm not eligible to come into association of devotees. So it, it goes on to say that even Krishna cannot deliver us. <laughs> but that is not possible. Krishna can deliver us at any moment. Even in one uh, flash of seconds, Krishna can deliver us. But he is waiting for us to show our sincerity. So we show our sincerity. Very, you know, in a very short period of time, Krishna will deliver us. When we start endeavoring. So he wants to see our endeavor. To what extent you can go. And as soon as he pleased, he is pleased and he will take us back home back to our life. But he wants to see our endeavor. He wants to see our sincerity. That's why we have to struggle. <laughs> Without struggle, we cannot uh, become pure devotees. That is sadhana is there. So uh, Krishna is very powerful. Bhakti is very powerful. Krishna consciousness is very powerful. Process is very powerful. Now it's up to us whether we want to follow the process or not. If you follow, results will come. If you don't follow, results will not come. Hmm. Process is there and it's very powerful. So that's the basis that Krishna Prabhu is making this statement. It's never too late. It's okay. Start practicing from now onwards, and you will also become a pure devotee. But we have to practice sincerely. Understanding that Krishna is very powerful, he can do, and uh, uh, Bhakti is very powerful. That is the basis of Srila Prabhupada's statement. And from any stage of life, from the, from the time of understanding its urgency, that yes, when you start understanding that yes, it's, it's, it's very, very important. We understand, realize its urgency of practice of Krishna consciousness, then we can begin regulating the senses in Krishna consciousness. Then start practicing devotional service, and then turn our lust into love of God, which is the highest perfection. So it is possible. And finally, there are two last verses, verse number forty-two and forty-three. So uh, now here Krishna is saying that right? working senses are superior to matter. Now it's a hierarchy Krishna is giving. Senses, sorry, matter, dull matter, right? Then we have senses above it. It's superior than matter. Then the mind is superior than uh, or higher than the senses. Then intelligence is even higher. And finally the soul is at the top. Now why Krishna is giving this intelligence? Krishna started with lust. Then he gave degrees of lust. He told that, oh, where is lust is sitting? Where you have to first target the senses? Now why Krishna is giving this hierarchy now? Because he wants us to focus on the higher aspect also. That uh, you know, if, it's, if you practice devotional service, if you tap on the soul, then naturally the other things will also you know, uh, come under control. Or uh, if you tap at the uh, root of the problem, 
uh, then automatically the whole disease will get, get cured. All the lower levels will also get settled down. So practicing of Krishna consciousness is very important. For example, if the king is captured in the battle, then automatically it's said that oh, the battle is won. So that's why we capture or if we tap on the soul aspect, that is practice of spiritual life, spirituality, Krishna consciousness, then automatically the, all the lower levels will slowly, slowly will be won, will be conquered. Like that's why Krishna is giving this hierarchy to understand the way we have to tap. And finally, this one, uh, the last words of this chapter. Thus, knowing oneself to be transcendental to the material senses, mind, intelligence, O oh, mighty Amgar, you know, one should be, one should study the mind by deliberate spiritual intelligence. And that is Krishna consciousness. And thus, by spiritual strength, conquer this in city, city of Mindy, which is lust. So, spiritual intelligence should develop. And how it will happen? By practice of Krishna consciousness. By understanding that I am not, I'm not this body, I am not, I'm above, above matter. Right? Can we cross our settlement? I am above everything, I am spirit soul, I am Brahma, Brahma is me. Right? So, this thing again that you said, it's a spiritual intelligence, mind, and. Uh, Aham Brahma is me, sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty general. Intelligence, mind, and senses are spiritual as well. Is that really easy? Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, you know, in the spiritual body, or with the soul, there are spiritual senses, spiritual mind, spiritual intelligence. Also. But now we are covered by the gross aspect or subtle aspect, so material aspects of those entities. Those are coverings. And the lust is covering all these entities. So, when the lust, uh, when the spiritual intelligence uh, emerges, then the lust or the covering, then the covering goes away. And then we can use, utilize the spiritual intelligence to. Basically, it will be conquered. It will be conquered. By spiritual strength. And how it will happen? By practice of Krishna consciousness. Intense practice of Krishna consciousness. Then it will happen. So, like that. So, there's a final slide. Art of mind control. Uh, step by step, it is given. Kind of step by step. Regulate the senses in Krishna consciousness. Uh, right? Uh, so we have to engage our senses in Krishna Manjana at the starting. Mind may not support initially, but uh, somehow or other we have to just, just engage our senses in Krishna consciousness. For example, uh, chanting the holy names of the Lord, tongue is used, right? the mind is also used obviously. And then um, the hands are used, and then going to temple, and then offering flowers to the Lord, smelling the flowers which are offered to the Lord, smelling the, the simpha oil which is offered to the Lord, so nice. <laughs> So when we are engaging our uh, senses in the in the in Krishna consciousness and regulating also, uh, how it is regulated? Like eating only prasada, not eating anything uh, which is not cooked for the pleasure of the Lord, which is not offered to the Lord. So and uh, all these things, if we practice nicely, that is regulation. And obviously, regulation in terms of quantity also, not eating too much, not eating too less. That is also regulation. But regulation also means not eating anything sinful or not doing anything sinful, but doing uh, everything in Krishna consciousness. That is also regulation. Different uh, angles towards regulation, regulated uh, senses, regulation of senses. So when we reg uh, regulate the senses in Krishna consciousness, in terms of quantity and in terms of uh, engaging our senses, and then uh, the spiritual intelligence strengthens. And obviously we have to engage our mind also in the service of the Lord. And slowly, slowly all these entities will get purified. And uh, so, and uh, obviously association of devotees is very important. Without association, it's not possible. You have to understand this, uh, the importance of association of devotees. You know that, uh, and naturally it happens, right? When we go out, we are not in the association of devotees, naturally we don't feel to chant. The, the lust. Takes yeah, even though you, out of us, we still see a lot of non devotees who are doing, who are showing us that uh, we are getting happiness in some certification, so we yeah. are also being like. Get yeah. affected by it. Uh -huh. like, My sister was asking this question once. Uh, that, you know, I'm feeling the, the materialist, I'm also happy. <laughs> I'm also happy in life. Then uh, we had a nice discussion then. <laughs> One minute and a half hour discussion. And then finally she was convinced that no, they're not happy. <laughs> 
stay happy we we discuss right now right? Yeah. temporary yeah. happiness yeah. i told her that see it's not that they are not happy they are happy but it's temporary mm-hmm. in an ultimate sense they are not happy Actually, they are permanently happy it, like if you open with someone who is in material like he will cry <laughs> <laughs> actually i met a lady uh, i met a mata ji in book distribution and that day i understood actually my this point was most strong this realization came that she was coming and then she was looking normal normal lady normal woman. by her face you cannot figure out what is going is going on inside and i i she just stopped and like sorry i was doing book distribution and then i was asking everybody bhagavad gita bhagavad gita and then she came and then i just showed her bhagavad gita you know, Uh, you know, it gives us happiness and all. I, I just spoke something, and then she stopped. Then she she revealed to me that she told that uh, actually I'm going uh, through depression in my life. I was shocked. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't figure out that you are in depression. Mm-hmm. In myself, I, you know, inside my mind, I told I didn't tell them explicitly. So she told that I'm going to through depression. Will this help me to come out of depression? I told yes. But why not? For sure, you come to a very nice uh, place actually. This is what you should do. You should read Bhagavad Gita. It will surely help. And I, uh, you know, uh, I I told that you can come to our center also. You can I, you know, that you can connect to our center, get a nice association of devotees, and you'll be inspired in association. And there are so many festivals, so many opportunities to learn and apply Bhagavad Gita. And Bhagavad Gita will surely help. Will surely help. There are many many case studies, and there are many real life, uh, you know, uh, real life cases where you know, people have. They were just about to commit suicide and they stopped themselves. Forget about suicide. Many many cases are there where uh, you know their life is completely transformed. So now they are very happy. So it is surely going to help you. Then uh, she took the move, <laughs> and uh, that's how. That's how, I mean uh, we cannot figure out like what's going on going on inside that a person. But uh, people are not happy. When you start speaking, then these things come out. In our uh, discussion also in our lunch, like this case. Take lunch in the cafeteria. These things come. My manager was only saying only. There is no end to earning money. You cannot give us that. He was only saying. I was like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very good realization. He told there is no end to earning money. It cannot get give us uh, happiness. He was telling me. Yeah, you told fact, I know. Fact. People are going to realize. They, they realize it, but what to do? They cannot stop. Uh-huh. They have a family. You know, they have to take care. They have to earn. Oh, so that is required, but uh, devotees are also they are also earning money. They are not attached. They are not attached to money. They know the perspective. They are doing it for Krishna's pleasure. So like that, there is a different uh, there is a difference in consciousness for today, the motive or purpose of life. So Bhagavad Gita is all about changing the consciousness. It's not that we have to change our whole existence now. It's about changing the consciousness. That's why it is Krishna consciousness. the physical setup was the same in battle of kurukshetra same army standing they are ready to fight but before bhagavad gita arjun was depressed and after bhagavad gita after hearing what happened he fought everything was there right he didn't say that all not fight i mean after hearing bhagavad gita he just he fought he won he fought with the great vigor he won also and then uh, what what really changed the consciousness changed It's not that the so physical setup changed. The whole, all the physical surroundings were same, but the consciousness changed. Consciousness got transformed. That's that's the glory of Bhagavad, and that's the message of Bhagavad Gita. Okay, so we'll stop here. Any questions? It's almost two hours. So maybe we can stop here. If any question, then we can ask offline also. Now we have to go uh, with our. We can stop the recording. So we have both ceremony also, right? For two hundred three, who are going to hundred four for committing.